I recently had an opportunity to work on uh, M22, beautiful globular star cluster. I took a very short exposure. It was just uh, 16 minutes, eight two-minute exposures in each of RGB. That's it. And what you're looking at here is the color-corrected version of the image. But I haven't stretched the image with my, uh, with my tool here. This is unstretched with my screen transfer function. So what is it that we're actually seeing in this image? What you're seeing are the saturated stars. I took a two minute exposure, lots of stars are saturated. And I know that somewhere in the audience, there are people right now who have grasped their hair and are running out of the room because they feel it is offensive to some God if stars are saturated in their image. Oh my God. Okay, so I don't because I can use the principles of image processing to take the data that I have in hand and work with it. And this allows for greater flexibility. You won't always be able to create pictures that you know don't have saturated stars, right? Or if you do, you're gonna have a lot of very short exposures. So um, I think that this is a nice approach, particularly for clusters where the stars themselves are the object of interest. I mean, we got to make sure the stars look good or the image doesn't look good because this is all about stars. In fact, any artifact or any you know, choice or decision that you make when it comes to processing clusters is multiplied by as many stars are in the picture. And uh, so it's very sensitive to whatever those choices are that you make. So what I'm going to demonstrate then is that this picture that you're looking at right here is a picture of the brightest stars and they will be very useful. So I'm going to make a copy of the image like this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, increase the color saturation of what you see here. In fact, let me go ahead and give this a, a name. So this is going to be brightest stars. And again, I'm taking advantage of the fact that these stars that are saturated are the brightest stars. That's all we're seeing in this image are the brightest stars. And it's the brightest ones that we need to take care of or else they're gonna look bad in the final result. That's why we're handling it in this way. So I'm going to uh, first change the color saturation. But uh, another nice trick that I've learned is that if you ever have an image that has two colors in it, this often happens like with HOO images, for example, the chroma adjustment here, instead of using just saturation, uh, this can actually be pretty powerful. Not all the time, but in this case, having that darker color um, or maintaining those colors, those hues can actually be nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that here. And I really boosted that color. And the centers of these stars look terrible. I mean, they have some weird color to them, it doesn't matter. It's really the halos of these stars that matter because that's what we need to get right. And I'm gonna now bring this brightest stars image into image blend. I always reset. So I'm gonna to go to brightest stars and I'm gonna be operating on the image itself. So I go back to brightest stars and let's just zoom in here. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to blend this image with itself, but a blurrier version of it, basically. So I'm going to use the filter here with the blur mode or the blur filter. You can see it made a blurrier image, right? Now, how much you do, this is where you know your decision is going to matter. Um, I think probably three pixels is good. If you make it too blurry, you just kind of lose the stars, right? And if you make it too small, it's not much of an effect. So probably somewhere around three pixels is about right. There we go. And having done that, I will now blend the original. Again, here's the original, here's the blurry. I blend them together with screen and I get this. All right. So this, again, these are what now the brightest stars look like in the image. I haven't changed the stretch of the image at all. It's just the brightest stars, but I've made them look in a very particular way. So I'm going to output that. I'll go ahead and exit this so I can give it a nice name. So this will be brightest, and I'm going to call this enhanced. And I'll set that here. I'll minimize this one. So I hope you're with me. We now have two images. We have a brightest enhanced 
and then we have our original. So now we're going to actually, you know, we need to brighten this image up as we would want to. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and employ a mask stretch to do it. But, and as I look over here at my, <laughs> at the things I need to do, one of the things I need to do is the uh, blur exterminator. We do want on the, the image that we want to go forward here, we, we want to take advantage of blur exterminator. Who would not want to do that? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to make sure that I didn't already do it. Yeah, I didn't already do it. Okay. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, you can see that I've turned off the, I better have here. Yeah, I turned off the, um, no, I didn't. I will turn it off. I turned off the, uh, um, the non-sharpening, uh, the, the non-stellar, sharpening of the non-stellar. So we don't want to do any sharpening there. We just want to do the stars. Sometimes if you keep that on, when you have crowded stars, it doesn't know the difference between the stars and the nebula, things like that. So we want to avoid that. And I'm not doing, not going too crazy with the sharpening of the stars. There we go. And now we'll do our uh, masked stretch. And this will give us, you know, all the stars in the frame that we really care about. It's a pretty short exposure. This will take a second as well. The computer does need to work on this one. There we go. This is the most intense processing I need to do. And there you go. I, I think you'll agree that we have an awful lot of stars here, right? In some sense, this is what a lot of people do. They get this image and they publish this one. And I want to take this a step in a different direction, all right? So I agree that we're seeing a lot of those dim stars and they do look pretty good, but all the bright ones, ugh, they have that look of the masked stretch. And I don't like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is because I closed it, I have to go get it out again. Let me get curves transformation. I'm going to apply a similar color boost. And then we're now going to go and use image blend to our advantage. I'm going to load this image of M22 with our brightest enhanced thing. So we go to image blend. I will clear this because I do not want to mess it up. I have our, uh, let's do M22 as the base image. It, yeah, we don't matter here, but um, then I'm going to do the brightest enhanced. These are the stars that we made the first time out of the saturated ones, right? And let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on. And then what we do is something kind of magical. We use screen and we put these two images together. And when you put those two images together, this is the result that you get. Maybe I should zoom in more, sorry. And I'm going to argue that those stars, they look pretty good to me. I think they look pretty good. So I'm going to output this. Now, if I wanted to, I could continue to manipulate the stars here in Image Blend, or I can manipulate them a little bit just outside of Image Blend out here. And one of the things that I had to do, if you really brighten up this image, you'll see that the background is quite blue. And that's because I took this during, you know, there was bright moon in the sky. This is all commissioning stuff. So at the end of the day, I tried to remove uh, some of that bias in blue. So the end result that I got was actually this version of the image. But, uh, but I think that that is a pretty good version. And I, I kind of increased the contrast so the stars look a little more substantial here if you just leave it in this form, oh, wherever it is, sorry. Where's the image? This one, if you leave in this form, these image, uh, these stars are a little bit soft, so you can increase, you know, the, the white point here to help, right? You can always do that. And the other thing that you'll probably want to do is uh, you can see that there's a lot of noise there. So I did certainly run noise exterminator on this image and I got rid of a lot of the noise. Might as well show you that. There it is. So then you take out a little bit of that sky and that's what it looked like here, but I ended up somewhere a little bit different here, uh, but it gives you the same idea. 